Hey, how's it going everybody? Remy Sovereign here from RemySovereign.com. With today's new video, what I wanted to do was I actually wanted to kind of break down my deadlift technique in a recent or new PR that I actually hit today, and that was 385 pounds on a conventional deadlift with the bar being elevated by a few inches. And so what, with the purpose of this video, what I wanted to do is by breaking down my technique, I just wanted to kind of educate anyone who is kind of looking to maybe improve their deadlift technique, is unsure about what to look out for when deadlifting, or is just maybe looking to, you know, some maybe motivation or inspiration to kind of improve their deadlift overall, or is kind of looking to get to a certain point of back to deadlifting. And with this video, I'll kind of break down things and kind of show you where I'm at with regards to my progress. So this was a conventional deadlift today. So keep in mind guys, I'm six foot five, with the bar being elevated, it's much easier for me to lift as opposed from the ground because we're kind of increasing the height of that bar. So the bar path is going to be less. So I'm increasing probably about three to maybe four inches. So it's almost like lifting from maybe six to six one for me, which from what I notice is much, just much easier from lifting from the ground just because the bar has to travel less. So there's less time under tension in theory. Now with this, I'm actually using an overhand and underhand grip. And so I actually want to kind of explain the pros and cons here of using an overhand and underhand grip. So the reason why I'm using an overhand underhand, underhand grip here is just because I'm going heavy. So what I've noticed is as I'm kind of getting to that 365 pound stage or higher, getting into that kind of category, the weight is really heavy for me and I'm not kind of 100% used to it yet. So the bar is tending to slip on me just because I don't really have that strong grip strength yet. I'm just kind of getting back to heavy deadlifting, especially after being out with a severe lower back injury for a long time. And so this is kind of the first time I actually used a overhand underhand grip. And so the reason being is just because I find using that overhand and underhand grip, it allows for me to kind of grip the bar better when I'm kind of lifting the bar and especially specifically with heavy weight. And it kind of prevents me, prevents the bar from slipping just because we're creating a little bit more torque with regards to the bar. Now, the downfall of using your overhand and underhand grip becomes when individuals use this too much. And so, for instance, if you're maybe a, a lifter who's always doing overhand and underhand, underhand, specifically with lighter sets, warm-up sets, and then kind of working to heavy sets, and you're always using the same kind of positioning of your hands, always using the same hand for overhand and always using the same hand for under, underhand, that's gonna, over time, create muscular imbalances as you kind of continue to do that. And when you create muscular imbalances, this can maybe lead to problems with regards to the shoulder and you may have flexibility issues as well. And it could maybe increase that injury risk or injury potential down the road, whether maybe you're an athlete or you're doing other lifts because now you have those imbalances with regards to the shoulder. And so that's why it's important to really consider or really look into your program. And if you're gonna use overhand, underhand grip, it's best that you kind of work it in a, um, a pro or appropriately or kind of program it in a, in a smart way where either you're just kind of sticking to it at very heavy lifts and you're alternating hands as well. So you're alternating maybe one, so maybe one deadlift you're doing your left underhand, your right overhand, and then the next deadlift, maybe it's right underhand, left overhand or maybe you switch it up by sessions just so you can kind of balance things out. And also at the same time, I just prefer to stick to overhand. I find it just more, a little bit more natural and I'm just more of a comfortable position. Mind you, it's a little bit harder to kind of grip the bar, especially when you're getting heavy, but I just kind of find I'm just in a more comfortable position doing a double overhand. And so I try to stick to that as much as possible. But for this, I kind of switched, it, switched that just because I was trying to kind of hit kind of a PR and really, kind of work my way up and and I as you and as as with the next video I tried to hit 405 but I'll kind of get into that um, in a few minutes but so we were hit 385 here using that overhand under underhand grip and I'll just play it uh, out here just to kind of show you guys me hitting it so it looks pretty solid everything looks pretty good but not everything is 100% good and what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down so if we get back to that starting position, what I want you guys to pay attention to here is the bar path here. Just watch the bar as it kind of, as I lift it upwards and also watch 
my left elbow, left arm here, and my knee. So I'm already kind of setting myself up in a bad position because my left arm here is essentially going to hit my left knee. And what you will see is it actually, as I, I actually hit my left arm with my, actually hit my left arm into my left knee and it kind of bumps the, the bar slightly forward and it kind of makes the lift awkward and the bar kind of becomes twisted on me. So I'll play that and I'll just watch from there. So the bar kind of twists. Now I'm gonna break that down slowly here. So if we go back. So right here, as we can see, the bar is already a little bit kind of slightly twisted, but if we kind of get that higher, what, we, what we're seeing here, essentially the bar is a little bit crooked and you will see my head actually turn as a kind of reaction. So there's my neck actually turning. And I'm doing this more as a reaction because I know the lift is awkward and it's kind of twisted on me. And so since the lift is kind of, since it's kind of twisted on me, the lift kind of became rather awkward here. And I kind of, I just as a reaction, I kind of looked into the mirror to the left just to kind of see where my spinal positioning was. So just by doing that, it kind of tore, uh, twisted everything, made the lift kind of awkward and overall wasn't a clean lift, but I still hit it, still got it. Um, but everything else, you know, I was kind of happy with, but just that kind of subtle flaw right there. And that's just kind of a result of me not being set up in the proper position to begin with. And that's in part me just not being 100% familiar or I haven't really hit a comfortable position yet with an underhand grip, specifically with the left arm there. And so this was kind of one of my first times using that underhand overhand grip since kind of coming back from my lower back injury. And well, it, I, you know, I, it helped a lot with the grip and kind of holding onto the bar. It was much, much easier to kind of finish that lift. I didn't have, I didn't feel that slippage as I might with a double overhand grip. So just prior to this, I actually did 375 with the plates lit, uh, elevated. And I did that with a double overhand and I felt like the bar almost kind of slipped on me and dropped. So that's why I kind of switched this overhand underhand. But it's just something that I got to play around with, with the overhand underhand. I prefer just to stick to overhand as much as possible because of that kind of muscular imbalance issue that could develop over time or in the long run. And that was just me hitting 385 on conventional with, the, with kind of the plates elevated. And as you can kind of see, guys, that's something you want to look out for is the bar path. What, how is the bar path traveling? Is it maybe twisted? Is it too far out in front? What does it look like? And I'll actually show you in the next video. So this was, there was an issue here with the bar path, but it wasn't that the bar path was really twisted. It was more so it just kind of shot out in front a little bit at the initial starting position. And so this was me trying to hit 405 today and I actually failed on it. Um, I probably could have hit it out if I really pushed it, but it was kind of going to be a, a bit of a struggle or fight to really kind of get get it out or kind of bang it out. And I didn't really want to push it that that hard, especially at this point, uh, just with where I'm at and the progress I'm kind of making. I just didn't really want to overdo it. So with this year, what we want to watch out for is the bar path again. Get it. And... I'm setting up here, so I'm doing the overhand, underhand grip again. Oh, so. Let's get it. So here, about to go. And then I fail. But if we break it down to right here. So what ends up happening is the bar, if we watch these plates kind of move subtly in front of my body. So they just kind of rolled, as you can see. If you see that again, they roll forward. So as you can see, the so the bar in a sense is rolling forward and it's coming a little bit further out in front of me, which is kind of throwing the lift off and making it more difficult than it should be for me. Mind you, this is 405 and it's pretty heavy weight, at least for myself. And so I kind of, actually I get the bar to about knee height almost here and then I just kind of drop it I'm just like I know this is going to be a struggle to get this up any further and I just kind of drop it and as you can see just a subtle technique for all the bars subtly out in front of me and 
the reason for that is me just kind of not setting up properly just kind of an issue with my setup a little bit especially when i'm going into brace i kind of push the bar a little bit when i go to when i go to lift it i kind of push a little bit out in front of me as opposed to kind of um, in a sense sitting back and kind of pulling it the bar back into me as opposed to or so when compared to kind of pushing it out and so just a little subtle technique issue very subtle because the bar is only moving a slight bit but just wanted to kind of show you that 405 fail but overall happy with 385 and then that brings me to this timeline here of kind of my deadlift progressions here just to kind of break things down so february 28th 2017 hit 315 on a conventional and sumo with the bar being elevated had my neck injury on march 24th playing hockey that put me out of training for three weeks wasn't in the gym for three weeks so i really kind of took um a lot out of me in a sense so it wasn't kind of back until mid-april and then on may 20th probably about after just slightly over a month of training again i was able to hit 365 bar elevated on a sumo and then may 31st about just slightly over a week later hit 375 pounds on a conventional without the bar being elevated so we're lifting right from the floor here and then today i hit 385 bar elevated conventional which i was pretty happy with but obviously you saw that little technique issue i had the bar kind of being a little bit twisted but and then that kind of just leads me to where i'll be at next so guys just wanted to kind of show you that and break things down and also just kind of show you my progress and at the end of the day guys it's all about making progress and kind of improve improving yourself as much as possible i'm just kind of looking to improve my deadlift technique and form as much as possible but at the same time lift heavy and lift safely as well now i'm not looking to set any records here or anything like that or really compete in any competitions i just want to be able to lift a heavy weight safely and do it in a good manner with good form with good technique now that's just kind of my deadlifting progress guys and that's kind of where i'm at now if you're someone that currently is actually maybe has just recently got back to deadlifting after maybe sustaining an injury or maybe you hit a new pr or maybe you just kind of learned something about this video with regards to technique and maybe the overhand underhand grip uh, i'd kind of love to hear about your story and just kind of where you're at with things and with that being said, guys, I'll leave it at that for this video. If you enjoyed this, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And I wish you guys all the best and a successful and productive day. And take care.